Greetings once again, my fellow soulers, brother from Harlem with the high school education. Now, as I told you before, that I'm making a white linen maxi coat to go along with the pants that I've already made my client there. Now, I'm going to put in what's called the pipe, double pipe beads and pocket. These two little areas here, these are the lips for that pocket. A lot of people want to call it a welt. It's not a welt. It's a beason. So, I've already indicated the marks of where the pocket's going to sit on this coat. This is for the inside pocket. Now, the marking here, that's just a guideline to show me how wide to make them. This is my cut line right here. So, first thing we're going to do we need a little power here, so we're going to buy up the engine here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set my beasons on my guideline. Now, when I start to stitch, when I start to stitch, I'm stitching so that you'll see a quarter of an inch stitch. That's going to be the size of the beads. So we're going to stitch that. So we're going to start with this one here. And I'm lining it up on my guide. And we're going to stitch that down. Tack it. You have to tack it to make sure that doesn't pull loose. So we're going to stitch that down. Now, because this is white, so that you'll see my line, and this is that ink that disappears with a little heat, see? So I put my line there on one side. And now, I'm going to flip it over. this side down. Now what you have to be careful of is to make sure that you start them and end them in the same spot. Now if you don't, I'm going to show you how to do that if you're off a little. kind of always have to do a little peeking to see where your stitch is. And rather than step on the gas and go past it, I turn the wheel and call that walking it now so that I get them even. So now we have that one on. Now, let's say it's off a little, and it might because sometimes you don't always get them in the same spot. And this is the easiest way to turn around and get them in the same spot. So, we're going to look and see where they are. Okay, now, on here, this is where, this is where this one ended, right there, and this one is a little half a stitch difference on that side. Now this is where this one ended. And it's a little half a stitch on that side too. So the easiest way to get them perfectly even take out is to turn it over on the back side. Place my needle down 
And instead of trying to stitch it, I'm going to walk it down. And get that last half stitch. Then I'm going to back jack it. So now I have them both in the same position. Sometimes if you try and do it by stepping on your treadle, you go past it. Same thing here. I'm a half a stitch, I'm a half a stitch short. So I'm going to walk it down here and walk it down to there. And I'm going to back it up. And that picked up that extra half a stitch. Sometimes you can get it exactly right. Sometimes you can't. If you can't, it's easier to do it that way than to try and press the presser foot, the um, machine down to get it. Now, at this point, we're going to cut open cut open our cut line. Now, once I get it started, I'm going to flip it over and go on the back side. Cut this down till about a half an inch from where we ended. And then we cut what we call the little pie shape. And we cut that to almost the end. We don't want to cut past it because we don't want it to open too wide. See, so we're going to cut that and cut it right to there. Turn it over here. Normally, when I practice, my students are practicing, we use a different color thread and a different color piece of fabric so you can see exactly where the cut is, the stitch you'll see because it'll be a different color. But now I'm making this for somebody and it's white, so I have to give it a... See, see now what I've created was a little pie shape there. Then, I'm going to turn this, turn these two little edges in. So I now have, now, this is the tricky part. Not really tricky, but this is the part that's very important. You want to stitch the pie, which is this little piece right here, as close to the opening as you can get it. If you stitch it here or anywhere else, you'll see a gap. So we're going to take it and we're going to set the needle down. Now, to make sure we get it even, I take and I pull this till I see it even. See? And I line it up. And then, you stitch it, back tack it, so the pocket doesn't come loose. Now, watch what happens. See? Now I have them perfectly squared in there. See? Now we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to flip that over. Get the pie see, exactly where it needs to be, and we're going to stitch that and tack it down. And here's the beauty of making these pockets like that is because when I flip this open, I have the edges to my beads in right there. Once you press it down, this is exactly the way they make them in the industry. Okay. Now, let me show you how simple it is to bag it. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to take the pocket bag. 
and I'm going to stitch it to the bottom of the piece. Most of the time I won't tack this because I'm going to cross over. It's when you're ending, you always want to make sure you tack it. But there's another stitch that's going to cross it that way, so I can almost omit the tack. Now I take my finger and I scratch that down. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the facing, the inside facing, and take the inside facing. stitch it to the bottom of the pocket bag. Now, because I'm making this for somebody and I have my own labels, before I close the pocket up, put my label on. Now what I'm really going to do is I'm going to put my Gentleman Jim label Labels in there. Gentleman Jim. Good friend of mine. You ever want to meet a nice guy? Look your brother up. And now what we're going to do is, because we had a pocket stationary, this is the facing. We're going to fold this back like so. And I'm going to stitch the edges. Now at this point, Go on the underside of the pocket. And I'm going to stitch through the cut line, the piece that I cut. This operation closes the pocket so that you can't put your hand up this way. Always keep the same color loaded. So if Bobby runs out, you don't have to stop and rewind it. So you keep the same color and keep extra bobbin already threaded up in that color so that you don't have to unthread your machine, just change the bobbin. Now, you can trim away your excess, okay. but when we finish, this is what we end up with. Pocket looking just like that. Okay. And when I went across the top, 
that closed that off. You put a facing on it so that you don't see the pocket bag. This is the same material as this rather than looking at the, the pocket bag or lining or whatever you use starting up here. And that's how easy it is to make a bees in pocket. Now, everybody won't make them that fast, but you can. And I always tell people, when you see me do it, you see me say, it's that easy, it is that easy. I use the two pipings, put them on, made my cut line, put my little pie, turned them inside out. See, that's the little pie stitched down, which closed this edge off. Same thing here. Then I bagged it from sewing on the pocket bag to the facing. Then I put the inside facing in, put the pocket bag to it, sewed it around. I started on this side. I started on this side here and I stitched up when I got to the top of it, I turned it, and let's close this side over, which closed the top of the bag. I turned it again, and I stitched down. Last thing, like I said, cut your excess off. And that, my friends, is the way we make this pocket. Now, in industry, so that you guys will understand, in industry, they have a machine that does that same pocket. Now, that pocket, if you notice, really takes about five minutes to put together. In industry, they have a machine, and it's called a double pipe pocket machine. And how it operates is it has two needles. And the two needles sew both of these lips at the exact same time. When it comes to an end, it has a blade that punches through and makes a perfect incision with the pie. Then it has teeth that fold out. And as it starts to come, as the blade starts to come down like that, the teeth open up, they bend backwards, and they pull these through. Once they pull them through, there's a plate up under the sewing machine that holds it in place. They give it a little burst of steam. The pocket's finished. Now, it takes me about five minutes to do the pocket. That it does in 30 seconds. That machine is not new. People say, oh, they have this new machine. That machine was around when I got into the industry in 1961. They just made a little fancy housing on it. I said, oh, a new machine. It is not new. That machine has been out since the late 50s or possibly earlier. I discovered it in the early 60s. So that's the way that pocket is made. You'll see the progress of this coat as I go along. I do thank you once again brother from Harlem signing off. Remember, only a high school education. Thank you very much.